Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, you're young, but you want a healing touch. Bone. Yes. Also, in allergies. Allergies. Uh huh? Yes. You ready for the first one? Yes. Look at it. One to the vent. Inhale through the nasal. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Do you have any headache pressure now? No. Oh, Lord. We're still working on his allergies. The next one's his asthma, which is an allergic reaction. Oh, glory. You ready after all this time to get free of it, huh? Yes. Well, there it goes. Oh. Come out of it, asthma. And everyone said, there it goes. Blessed be God. Here we walk along with this ex asthma case. No wheezing. Are you sure? I'm sure. You got new lungs. Heads clear. From here to here. It's clear. Would you like another touch in your back? Ah, surprise, surprise. Tightens up through here. Got your toes. Now, if you hurry, you must have felt it. What's it feel like? It was good. I can't do that usually. <laughs> God has placed a ministry on you. So you know that. And it's uh, in the form of a gift. You have a gift. <coughs> and the gift that has come upon you, sometimes you're afraid to use it. And because you're fearing people, mainly preachers. Oh. Well, when it comes on you, you're to obey. And I'm going to tell you the gift because uh, I see what it is. But the gift that's come upon you, the Lord shows me the gift that, has come, that comes on you is the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy. Lord. Is that true? Yes. And prophesy. Don't neglect your gift that lies within you. Or in the next epistle, we're going to have to stir up the gift that lies within you. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. Everybody says, getting real in this house. We were coming out of Maine, actually from the Canadian farm, which is one of our bases that we were Canada for, out of. We're up on the farm, the last day of May, 1977. There's the house looking pretty good. New tractor and plow. The pickup is running. The old crooked barn held up over the winter. Dandelions are everywhere. And Freddie, look at that now. There goes the baler. In the process, one's just about ready to fall off. There it goes. This whole field filled with many, many bales.
what's going to happen to you. Look upon me. God's going to loose you in your legs, particularly in your knees, in your kneecaps. Would you receive that? It's coming out of your left knee first. The left knee, it's a little worse. Hmm? Now you may stand up on your left knee. Walk out in the middle of the room and follow me. These signs shall follow them that believe. Stop. Give the devil, not me, give the devil a swift kick in the breeches of your left foot. Bend the knee again, tell me what's going on there. It's great. Mm -hmm. well, we knew that, but there's a couple folks out here didn't know that yet. Okay. Now, look upon me. You want more than this. Yes, sir. You're secondly going to be healed in your thyroid. Make you happy? Yes, sir. It's doing two things to you. One is a little lump fills up here in your throat. Yes, sir. You can live with that. But the thyroid's messing up your metabolism in your blood. Because that's what that gland controls, is the metabolism. No more colds and flus and viruses all winter. Are you ready for that? Oh, yes. How about your wrist? you want it strengthened? Yes, sir. Carpal tunnels are given way here in your wrist. Yes, sir. Your blood pressure fluctuates. It goes high. Yes, sir. You have a stress in your spine of your back. It's in the lower back like a belt that tightens. Sure does. And the other thing is to your digestion on occasion, which means it's chronic, it comes and goes. You're there. It's like a cramp or a pain that feels like something blocking you. Is that right? Yes, sir. Loose this woman surgically, cut this thing out of her lower intestinal. Gone, gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't knock her down. I did my best to hold her out. Now she's on the operating table. Just smash the job. Oh, it's gone. There goes the lump. Everyone said she's a healed woman. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We were coming from our base at the Canadian farm, and as we came down through Maine, uh, during a blizzard, in the old limousine, the limousine, uh, the starter went out, and it died. And it was like 30 below zero. And we let it coast off to the side of the road till it landed in the ditch and you couldn't see nothing and the, and the little babies were in the limousine had a little baby that was uh, just a few months old and we were uh, headed south and it started getting real cold and the baby started to cry and we were praying we didn't know what to do Oh, glory to God. The brother in the corner, Stan. There's two things. One's big, one's small. Which one should I start with? You don't care? All right, the very small one's in your knee. In your knee. When you first, I didn't know it until you stood up. And as soon as you stood up, I could feel it in my right knee where I felt it. Kick it loose, it's a small thing. Hands up. I see, there's a reason you're here tonight, okay? First of all, you're hungry for God. Second of all, you've come here to prove me, see if I'm real, see? Uh, the, because if it is real, then you know that you have the nagging knowledge for five years now you've had it that you got to do this too. Is that right? So you need two things. There's two gifts you need. And the one I'm praying for first is the worst one. I mean, the one you need the worst. And that's the word of wisdom. See? 
because you're off in left field and the ball's in right and you're bouncing like a football. We don't know where you're going to wind up next. And you're kind of like the fellow that was down at the bus station when his ship came in. Right place doing the wrong thing, wrong place doing the right thing. Word of wisdom is coming to you. And the secondary one is going to be a gift of healing. Because you've come to be seated and to be sharpened up. Impartation. Right? Lay hands on her and she'll be healed. Now tell her be, to be healed in her knee. All right, let's see how good he is, Auntie. Rise up and walk. What's the knee feel like now? Feels fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it hurts real bad when I walk. Mm. Well, then let's run. <laughs> Hurt any? No. Okay. You feel no pounding pressure to the head? All right. You did good, son. You passed your test. So I got out. I, I had a big old heavy coat on. It was black. And it was nighttime. And uh, there was no traffic coming on the interstate. There was an interstate at this time. In May, 95, in fact. I saw a car coming the other way, and I ran across the interstate. And uh, as it came toward me, I, I jumped out in front of it and flagged it like this. And uh, it was a cop car. It was a police, state trooper. And it was the only car that was coming. And he skidded uh, and stopped up short and got out and said, What are you doing in the highway? What are you doing in the middle of the interstate? I almost killed you. I almost hit you. I said, You, you wasn't going to hit me because you weren't coming that fast. And I, if you hadn't have stopped, I'd have jumped out of the way in time. And he thought I was some kind of an escape convict or something. I said, my family is across the interstate and we're stranded in the car and the babies are in the car and we're freezing to death. Oh dear friend, this sinful world is lost and dying. Every Christian heart is burdened down with care. Tell me, are you doing all you can for Jesus? Are you traveling down the avenue of prayer? Keeping faith in your heart in consecration. Every hour of every day do you prepare? Tell me, are you doing all you can? Are you praying for the ones who know not Jesus? As they're being led into a tempter snare, would you stand aside and see a losing battle? Or are you traveling down the avenue of prayer? Are you ready? Should your master call at midnight? Are you traveling down the avenue of prayer? 
Praise God. Come, Granny, let's pray for you. Oh, I feel your faith. <laughs> it's going to be easy to pray for this one. Uh, let's do something first for your eyeballs that has nothing to do with your glasses. But we're going to pluck these floaters off your eyes. Hold tight. Oh, you hold them. I don't trust her to hold them tight. Now, Lord, rebuke the floaters and take the cataracts. And if she always wears glasses, I don't care. You said you'd take the cataracts and the floaters, so we have to obey according to the word that comes. Got the family folks waiting at you for them. Well, maybe they're over here. <laughs> Is it quite clear and crisp and bright? To you and up. Yes. Praise God. This. Square your shoulders. It's tight, tell me. Not tight. Your, your back to your lower back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What happened? It's gone. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what faith the size of a mustard will do. Most people I meet, they, they believe you, you can have faith the size of a mountain to move a mustard seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go in peace. You've made an effort, strong effort to be here tonight. You could be healed, but there's something that uh, is more important for you right now. There's a financial miracle coming to you. Prosperity. How bad if you needed this? Really? 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 I see three major bills that are paid by Valentine's Day. There is in your legs, around your knees, a, a great a stiffness locking up. Yes. Here comes her knees. God will heal her knees then he will pay the three major bills by Valentine's Day. God's delivered you from cancer, and you're going to stay free from it. Every time the devil tells you it's coming back on you, you're not having a relapse. Yes. Here's your eyes. Come on, 2020. Come back to her face. Walk around and look at the friendly folks waving at you. Oh, blessed be God. You have blessed us with great spiritual blessings tonight. The Lord revealed three things to Brother Freddie tonight. One was about my knees, and I had been to the doctor this week about my knees, and there was nothing they could do about it. It was my left knee, mostly. I couldn't walk up and down stairs without it hurting really bad, and now it doesn't bother me at all. The other was about my eyes, and the Lord showed Brother Freddie about my eyes, and the Lord touched my eyes. The other thing was a financial miracle. Had some really unexpected things hit me this week, which would have put me into not being able to pay my bills next month on time. And the Lord revealed this to Brother Freddie that by the 14th of February that I would be able to pay these bills. And that's exactly when I would be getting my second paycheck of the month. And I wouldn't have enough, but I will now. Thank the Lord. And we've got to find help fast. So he got right on the radio and called around and uh, found that there was a motel that had one room left in the motel. And he said, hold the room. I'm bringing a stranded family to that room. And so we escaped death again in that blizzard with the only car that was on the interstate that was a policeman. Other than that, nobody would have ever stopped if it wasn't a cop, and the, the, and the trooper wouldn't have stopped if I hadn't jumped in front of him in the midst of the blizzard in the dark of night, waving my arms in a black coat, making sure that I stayed out of the way of being run over. I was 
pretty sure about that. I, I left myself time to get out of the way if he didn't stop. So we went to the motel and in the morning we got up and we found a place to fix the alternator. The sun had come out and we got the car running again and we we're up and rolling and we made it to Florida for our winter season where we worked out of our winter base, which was in Winter Haven, Florida, and has been since 1964. Here we are at Clark Ranch where we are illustrating and showing by way of demonstration, our garden that we've worked so hard on. It is approximately 50 feet by 150 feet, and we hope to grow a lot of good food here for this winter.